everybody, it's Mitch, and welcome to my next video. Today we have got another Dungeons & Dragons race description for you. And today, from the races of destiny, we have our friend the Tiefling here. Boom. So now our Tiefling. Tieflings, a lot of you are probably familiar with. Tieflings, they may not be the most common race out there. They're no humans or elves or dwarves or anything, but... As far as exotic races go, they're pretty typical. I believe they're actually a typical race in 5e because they're just that common. So what is a tiefling? Um, the answer is quite simple. They're mostly human with a little bit of fiend. So they have a fiendish ancestor. So either devil or demon or just a generic fiend because there is there are actually fiends that are neither demons or devils. Although most fall into one of the two categories, uh, or at least align with one of the two categories. But that's all irrelevant for uh, the, uh, the conversation at hand. Right now we're just talking about tieflings, the ancestors of when these fiendish creatures have children with humans. And after a few generations down the line, when that uh, fiendish blood has diluted quite a lot, what the result is at that point. And that is, of course, tieflings. Now, tieflings are usually evil, although not always. Um, yeah, so let's get into um, let, let's get into what the mechanics of a tiefling are, because I think that's probably the most important thing to talk about at the moment. So first off, they have a plus two dex. Nice. Plus two int, again, very nice. Uh, and a minus two to charisma. Okay, that's a bit of a downside, but it's it, but uh, they actually have a positive stat buff, which means there's definitely going to be a level adjustment coming, which it will, but it's not so bad. Uh, next up, outsider, uh, native, cool, a lot like the ASMR I talked about before, uh, medium sized, uh, tieflings baseline is 30 feet, again, a lot like a human. They get dark vision, nice. Um, plus two racial bonus on bluff and hide checks. Okay. They're able to cast darkness once per day as either a first level caster or whatever their caster level happens to be. Um, whichever is higher. So if they're like a, if you go rogue, then you're just going to be as a first level caster. But if you're like a sorcerer or a cleric or something, then it's not going to be as a first level caster. It's going to be as a whatever level cleric or wizard you are. And you just go with whichever is the highest. Um... So that's pretty cool. Um, they get automatic languages of common and infernal. Bonus languages of draconic, dwarven, elven, gnome, goblin, halfling, and orc. So pretty extensive list of all the common-ish languages. Well, common languages and common-ish. Favorite class rogue makes a lot of sense for these guys. And level adjustment of plus one. Honestly, a lot of this stuff is really similar to the ASMR. Surprise, surprise. I mean, it's just the celestial version of the same thing. Uh, they're two sides of the same coin. Um, but, yeah, they're actually they're actually a pretty good race. If you want to make a rogue or something, not terribly uncommon, uh, especially with that uh, darkness ability. I think ASMRs get light, but these guys get darkness. And, honestly, as a rogue, that's pretty useful. It's not magical darkness or anything, but these guys have dark vision. So they cast darkness, and then they're like, okay, now a lot of people can't see me, but I can see just fine. And they can, you know, try and go in and get their sneak attack with that by using the cover of darkness. Not the most effective strategy because there's a lot of races that have dark. There's a decent number of races that actually have dark. So they almost said a lot, but a lot of them is just low light vision. This isn't 5e where everyone just gets dark vision. No, there, there's a distinction made. But, um, yeah, uh, it, it's a decent strategy. Not the best. There's definitely better. But only a one-level adjustment not and no racial hit dice, that's not terrible. You can really put a lot of your efforts into uh, focusing in on other things, like just getting your, uh, class hit, uh, your class skills and all that. And you can even get rid of that uh, level adjustment pretty easily. The plus two dex is nice. The two intelligence is great for having tons of skills. Lack of charisma, okay, that's a bit of a downside. But, I mean, you probably just aren't going to be playing a diplomat anyway. So, not the end of the world. Um, 
yeah, it's a pretty good uh, race all in all. So if you guys uh, have anything you want to say, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, if you like the video, please consider giving me a like and uh, sharing it if you really liked it. Um, that way your uh, friends can see it and that helps me out a lot. Uh, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. Just click that right there and check out more videos right down below. As always, I'm Mitch and I'll be seeing you.